Because I had a situation happen a few days ago where I realized that although I do go around with this persona or this sort of like outer shell that I generally don't care about certain things, especially when it comes to like friends and stuff and hanging out with people or whatnot, I think there is a little bit in me, a little bit in me, a really tiny, tiny, minuscule drop in me, you know, especially depending on the person that's definitely looking for validation. That's definitely looking for somebody to kind of like pat me on the back, say things are okay. And also that kind of idea of looking for someone to kind of like you, quote unquote, not in a romantic way, just in like a, you know, a friendship way. Like, hey, I like you. I think you're cool. But I think in life in general, what I've kind of, you know, slowly but surely started to accept is that for the most part, for the most part, you really cannot, you really, really, really cannot, 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 cannot um, make someone like you especially in that way it's just impossible to do and sometimes people don't like you for things that you have no idea about and more often than not more or more than more something i have to stress completely is that it's none of your business why they don't they're not obliged to tell you why they don't they don't need to detail it to you explain it to you validate to you in any kind of way for you to get the message it should just be enough for them to say nah i'm cool on you keep it moving that should be enough but for whatever reason there's a little part of me that's always kind of looking for the explanation, looking for the why. And it doesn't really matter, really, to the end of the day, because it's never going to be what I think it's going to be in my head. So there's that kind of weird, imagined nostalgia, imagined um, reverence, uh, imagined compatibility, imagine whatever whatever it may be it's a kind of like i'm i'm thinking all up in my head it doesn't really exist in the real world or it's kind of one-sided that's what it kind of be it makes kind of one-sided it kind of makes me think a little bit of like unrequented love and that's sort of in the same way but you know without the sop- soppy romantic side of it this is just on purely friendship level but it kind of reminds me of unrequented love like you know those times and occasions when you're a kid and it's valentine's day and you write on a bit of paper oh um do you like me i don't necessarily think it's always like that you like me yes or no box i don't necessarily think you want to kiss the person you want to sleep with the person you want to be with them it's just you kind of outwardly asking somebody if they want to be your friend and when somebody ticks that no box or something it's a brutal especially more so if that person ticks a no box and tries to write something touching like oh thank you for letting me say no don't write anything touching just tick the no box and keep it moving it kind of reminds me back in the day of like i remember doing when i used to do club promoting you know with a couple people i used to do it with whatever and we would um, first, you know, in the first time we would do it, you'd kind of put events up on Facebook. That'd be the way everyone used to kind of like find events. Now I think it's kind of splintered across like RA and Dice and other sort of TikTok platforms. But usually back in the day, it was always Facebook was the first portal call to find out what's going on in the weekend. And you'd put the event up. And obviously, you know, I'd have, you know, at the time, my original Facebook had like close to 3,000, maybe 5,000 friends, crazy amounts. But, you know, those were all people that I met across college, across sorry, sixth form university working in different areas um of the industry working in different sectors working in different companies you know i just added it my lump people but i remember one time or loads of times actually when you send out an event you get people that would click no and then write on the wall of the event oh here's why i'm not coming and it used to always infuriate me like i was like Number one, I'm not sending this invite to you directly. It's just like a thing that you do on Facebook. Remember, in the beginning, you could just click select all. Then I guess Facebook realized that that would be like a money, um, something they could generate a lot of money from. So they turned it off and then that you have to get a plug-in or you have to get a special thing. Before you could just you know load up your friends, just click select all and just send invite. And then obviously everyone would get the invite in your phone, in your in your contact list or in your friends list. And some people would go out of their way to click no and then write, oh, hey, Egg, thanks for the invite, but I can't go because my mom, because my dad, because my cat, because I, I don't care. I didn't send this to you directly. Just say no if you don't want to go and say yes if you do or just ignore it. It's not that big of a deal. And I guess that goes back to the same thing when people write, you, you know, would write a note rejection to you. It's like they're trying to explain why they don't like you. It's like, no, 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 no. I didn't ask you for an explanation. If anything, this explanation makes it worse. <laughs> just say no and <laughs> let me just continue with life and stuff. So that's what something I realized. But I was thinking about unrequented love. I was thought about unrequented love and how sometimes I have a tendency to maybe um, have it and to sort of uh, seek validation or seek explanation as to why things weren't the way or aren't the way they used to be. And it's not really none of my business. And sometimes things just change. And regardless of how much it sucks, it just is what it is. And there's nothing you can kind of do about it. 
And it kind of led me onto this little page on Wikipedia that I kind of, you know, was researching and looked up um, on unrequented love. And it's got a really interesting quote here, courtesy of Frederick Nietzsche, the famed philosopher, who says the follows. Indispensable to the lover is his unrequented love, which he w would at no price relinquish for a state of indifference. I'll read that one more time because I can't read. Indispensable to the lover is his unrequented love, which he would at no price relinquish for a state of indifference. So essentially he's saying the pursuit of unrequented love is better than maybe not trying to seek it in at all in the slightest which i think is a little bit of a misnomer because i think the brutality and the pure sick feeling you get in the bottom of your stomach when someone says hey i don't want to be your friend cannot be re repeat cannot be a cannot be copied because i remember having that thing happen to me a few times when i was like a teenager especially growing up in this like really small area and ends with not a lot of people that kind of came out or not a lot of kids that were basically allowed out and there's only a small group of us and then another cooler kid come joins along no an older kid sorry starts hanging out with us who all the kids kind of thought was cooler and for every reason he just didn't take a liking to me then he decided to you know only hang out with those kids by themselves and they didn't want to tell me and then it got to a point where i was like why do i keep having to chase you guys and you know so naive so dumb I didn't realize what was happening. I was like, why do I have to keep chasing you guys? Why don't you just call me when you're out? And he said, yeah, we don't want to be your friend. Like, I remember legitimately like, like an American high school movie, running home, crying, like running home with tears running right down my face, like sprinting, running upstairs, crying in my bed. And of course, my dad came in and gave me some very unsoothing words of advice, like suck it up, be a man. Who cares if they don't like you? But like just really, you know, horrible kind of, you know, um, typical African uncle or African dad sort of like um, words of encouragement that didn't help in the slightest. And I just kept sobbing into my pillow for ages. I was in my room for time. And if anything, that kind of explains, not saying it out loud, out loud. <laughs> that might explain how I am nowadays, why I'm so kind of hardened. And, you know, even though I'm still a bit of a big softy on the inside, why I kind of can come across so hardened and I can come across a little bit callous and not necessarily caring about people's opinions or feelings and stuff and sometimes as well have that tendency to i won't even mention i won't even say it's trauma dumping but have the have the kind of necessity to want someone to feel what you're feeling like you know that kind of thing that whatever it may be because it's so visceral in that moment when really it doesn't necessarily matter to that extent and also it's none of your business so going forward in 2023 my new motto it's to leave people alone in general i think i said it in the beginning of the year i think overall don't believe what anyone says was a new motto of 2023 take everything what people say at face value doesn't matter how severe how the severity of what they're saying people in general just love to talk out of their ass look what's happening with this george santos guy he's like a kind of throwback to the glory years of politicians where they just you know they got ahead in life with just pure grift scumbaggery and lies and i think we're kind of in that era now we're kind of getting to that era where people are just going to be willing to say anything and anything to get forward in life and it kind of is the name of the game who cares but it, you have to be aware of it be aware of the fact that people in general talk a lot of rubbish and you should never believe them and again they don't owe you an explanation they don't owe you to give you proof or you know to to try and prove you wrong or make them believe you or make you know they, they, they don't you don't need to believe them in any way shape or form but don't believe what people say and then the second thing leave people alone just leave them alone in general like focus on you especially now considering how the economy is considering how the world is if ever there was a time to just focus on you and yours this is it there is no reason in my head where i should be trying to you know um recapture some magic that happened long long time ago and even then was it magic who knows um reignite this do this inform that there's no reason i should be doing it in the slightest uh apart from maybe just me being like emotionally selfish or tyrannical or um uh whatever else i don't know there's something in it right where it's kind of it kind of feels a little bit greedy it kind of feels a little bit entitled that you want that person to feel how you want to feel, how you are feeling in that moment where really they're allowed to feel any way they want to because it's their own experience and they interpret it a completely different way than you have and they don't owe you an explanation. But 2023 is definitely, I feel like, the year of leaving people alone. Mind your business, leave people alone, keep your head down, work hard on what you're doing, um, do right by the people near you and that's all you can hope for because in life in general, well, I think most of us know this, but you really don't have a second chance at first impression. 
And sometimes you just don't know how you come across. And I have somebody that kind of has seen that happen to me in real time. And I think a lot of it is also self-inflicted for me because I think this, is, you know, it's probably you know, it's, it's safe to say the no friends thing is definitely a trauma, right? It's definitely something that I'm burying and I'm kind of working through in ways that are a bit weird. So I went through that horrible time when I was a kid, right? That's just a anecdotal throwaway story of when I was like under 10 years old. It's not, it's dumb really to think about that can affect me so far down in life but i also think that the lack of day-to-day -day practice of maintaining relationships and being there for somebody and blah 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 and all that soppy stuff that i don't care for in the slightest definitely affects my ability to see what's actually going on to hear what someone's actually saying when they say the words that they say to understand it to um have a discernment right to be able to uh, perceive and you know um, understand something without somebody even saying it articulate that they don't even need to articulate it you can just get it from how they're moving what they're not saying um, all those things reading between the lines I'm not really good at it because again I don't maintain the relationship in the slightest and also as another kind of sidebar something again I've kind of learned over the last couple of weeks or so I'm incredibly selfish incredibly so and i think this is something that was drummed home to me a lot when i was at home and i didn't really buy into it because you know your parents talk to you and they say you know my, my, especially my parents they didn't they didn't waste any time reminding me all the things i didn't do right so after a while you're like you know what i'm just gonna zone it out i don't want to listen to it anymore so you don't really listen hear it but one thing i remember them saying a lot to me which i think was definitely true one thing was not, not true they, they said, said to me i was really stubborn and hard-headed which i don't think is true or if anything i think i'm too uh I'm too open to things. I'm too adaptable. I'm, you know, give me more information and convince me on this side. And I can understand every side of the argument. I can be a little bit of a fence sitter in that way. I don't really have one place I kind of stand on. So I don't really think the hard headed, stubborn thing is true. And I'm open to new things, blah, blah, blah. But one thing I remember them saying that's definitely true, definitely, definitely true, is me being selfish. Like me, me believing that my time is like more precious than somebody else's time. Not in a way that I'm like going to try and jump in front of you in the queue because I feel like I have to go in front of you. No, just in terms of like what I want to do. Like if I don't want to do something, I just won't do it. And I think, you know, in, in, you know, in adult life, especially if you want to have friends and you want to have acquaintances and stuff, there are going to come a time and an occasion where you're going to be required to do something that you don't want to do because your friend just needs some support hey i want to buy something like here you want to come down to me and help me out yeah cool i want to go to this place and eat i don't want to go by myself do you want to come yeah cool you know all these things that you're going to do for somebody that don't necessarily you know land in your area of interest but you do them because your friend asks you and they want you to you want, they want they want you to help they want basically you to help them out or they want your company right they want to be around you and stuff and want to hang out but i just don't want that you know i want to do the things that i want to do and anything that impedes it is just a distraction and it's not good yeah, you know I mean, it's not good in the slightest because you end up doing things that I'm obviously not proud of where you end up promising people things and you don't follow through because on the day you wake up, you're like, I don't want to do it. You don't want to give people an explanation because you feel like you don't owe anyone an explanation, which then makes, you know, relationships go down the tank because I've done that a few times for sure. I've just been like, you know what, I'm just not going to speak to you anymore now. I've just decided because I just don't want to. And that's obviously really bad.